subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 28th of January. Angry job seekers in India protest over alleged flaws in railway recruitment. Pakistan records highest single-day rise in COVID-19 cases. And. Study falls US military on Afghan civilian casualties Pentagon plans review. And now for all the details. Student associations in India's eastern Bihar state on Friday burned tires and blocked roads as they called for a shutdown in protest against what they called irregularities in recruitment by the Mahmud Railways Department. The protest came despite assurances by the Ministry of Railways that a committee has been formed to look into the concerns of the candidates. Thousands of angry students in India's eastern Bihar state on Friday took to the streets as they called for a shutdown against alleged irregularities in recruitment exam of the Mahmud Railways Department. The protests erupted after test results for different job categories showed that the names of the same people appeared multiple times, which unsuccessful candidates felt wrongly excluded them. The protesters demanded the results to be revised. India's railways employs more than 1.2 million people. The Ministry of Railways on Wednesday said that a committee had been formed to look into the concerns of the candidates. However, the protesters said that the committee is taking too long and it has been almost 3 years since the exams were conducted. एक बड़े स्कैम के द्वारा मात्र 3.5 लोगों का लाख के स्टूडेंटों का रिजल्ट दिया गया था। इसके खिलाफ जो सरकार ने कहा कि रिजल्ट हम वापस देंगे। उन्नाइस में विज्ञापन निकला था, उन्नाइस में परीक्षा हुआ था, तीन साल लग गए इनको रिजल्ट देने में। अब जो कैंसिल किए हैं, तो इसका रिजल्ट कब देंगी? ये सरकार जब तक घोषणा नहीं करती है, तब तक छात्र सरकों पर हैं। और हम मांग करते हैं कि अभिलम, आरआरबी, एनटीपीसी छात्रों की मांग पूरा हो, रेलवे ग्रुपटी Earlier on Wednesday, thousands of youngsters tossed empty train coaches and blocked rail traffic in protest. India's unemployment is estimated to have exceeded the global rate in five of the last six years. The Railways Ministry said those found involved in the vandalism could be barred from appearing for railways jobs apart from other legal action. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arinda Bakshi said on Friday that Indian missions are working closely with Canadian authorities to probe illegal immigration after four Indians were found frozen to death near the US-Canada border last week. India's High Commission in Ottawa in a statement confirmed the identities of the deceased as 39-year-old Jagdish Baldev Bhai Patel, his wife and two kids. Officials said that they got separated from the group of 18 people and were probably caught in a blizzard. U.S. authorities intercepted the other members of the group and have charged a Florida-based man with human trafficking. Meanwhile, the Indian police has also detained six people in a crackdown on illegal immigration in western Gujarat state, from where the disease belong. Canadian authorities have also informed that based on the circumstances, the death of all the persons have been determined to be consistent with exposure to the outdoor elements. Our High Commission in Ottawa and our Consulate General in Toronto are working closely with the Canadian authorities on all aspects of the investigation and also providing consular services to the family of the deceased. Pakistan on Friday reported 8,183 new COVID-19 cases, its highest daily infections tally since the pandemic began as the South Asian nation imposes new restrictions to curb the fast-spreading Omicron variant. While vaccination of children above the age of 12 has been made mandatory to attend the schools, 
The children under 12 can attend physical classes with 50% attendance. Pakistan reported the highest number of daily COVID-19 cases on Friday ever since the pandemic began in 2020 after 8,183 people tested positive overnight as infections continue to rise due to the new Omicron variant. With the detection of new cases, the country's current positivity rate swelled to 11.92%, while the active case count stands at 98,221. A day earlier, the government decided to extend coronavirus curbs, including ban on indoor gatherings from January 31 till February 15. About 70 million people in Pakistan, or 32% of the population, have had two vaccine doses. लोगों का रुझान तो है बूस्टर्स के लिए भी लोग आ रहे हैं ठीक है ना सेकंड डोजेस भी जिन लोगों ने होल्ड कर दी थी वो लोग भी जो है वो अब रुक कर रहे हैं सेकंड डोजेस के लिए जिनका फोर टू फाइव मंथ्स का गैप है तो डेफिनेटली लोगों में रुझान तो डेवलप हुआ है वो जो बीच में एक ब्रेक आ गया था तो अब लोगों ने जो है वो उस ब्रेक को जो है वो कम्प्लीट करना जो है वो शुरू कर दिया है तो ठीक है थोड़ा सा तेज़ी आएगी उम्मीद तो यही है हमारी कि लोग आएंगे the government has authorized booster vaccination shots for citizens over the age of 30, while vaccination of children over the age of 12 has also been made mandatory to attend schools, and children under 12 will attend schools with 50% attendance. More on news from Pakistan. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Friday reaffirmed his commitment to rid Pakistan of all forms of terrorism as he paid tribute to 10 soldiers killed in an attack by insurgents in Balochistan. The recent attack came a week after Baloch separatists claimed a blast in Lahore city, in which at least three people were killed. Prime Minister Imran Khan in a statement said on Friday, we are resolute in our commitment to rid Pakistan of all forms of terrorism. As he paid tribute to 10 soldiers killed in an attack in Balochistan's Ketch district earlier this week. The Baloch Liberation Front or BLF insurgent group has claimed responsibility for the Tuesday's attack on an army post near southwestern Gwadar port in which China is investing. The army said it killed one of the attackers and has arrested three others in a clearance operation that was still going on. China is involved in the development of the Gwadar port on the Arabian Sea and other projects in Balochistan province as part of a $60 billion China-Pakistan economic corridor. Ethnic Baloch guerrillas have been fighting the government for decades for a separate state, saying Islamabad unfairly exploits the rich gas and mineral resources of Balochistan. The insurgents often target gas projects as well as infrastructure and security posts in Balochistan, but have begun launching attacks in other parts of Pakistan. The recent attack came after a week after Baloch insurgents claimed a blast in Lahore city, in which at least three people were killed. A study by the think tank Rand Corporation released on Thursday faulted the U.S. military for considerable weaknesses and inconsistencies in its review of allegations of civilian casualties. And the Pentagon announced a broad review. A botched U.S. drone attack killed 10 civilians in Afghanistan in August last year in the final days before American troops withdrew from the country. The U.S. military is under intense scrutiny over its procedures to guard against civilian casualties following a high-profile mistaken drone strike in Kabul on August 29 that killed 10 civilians, including 7 children. Not only did the U.S. military botch the targeting, but in the strike's initial aftermath, the Pentagon's assessment concluded that it killed Islamic State militants, preparing a bombing attack against U.S. troops. A study by the R&D Corporation think tank released on Thursday faulted the U.S. military for considerable weaknesses and inconsistencies in its review of allegation of civilian casualties. The independent R&D study, which was required by congressional legislation, concluded systematic weaknesses at the Department of Defense were causing it to fall short of its duties on civilian casualties. In conflicts, the U.S. military often has limited access to targeted areas before or after strikes, relying on intelligence gathered remotely from sources like drone surveillance and satellite imagery. The report also noted that investigating civilian casualties often falls to junior personnel who do not receive formal training. 
Meanwhile, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin issued a memorandum on Thursday asking for the creation of a plan on civilian harm, mitigation and response in the coming months and creation of Civilian Protection Center of Excellence later this year. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday inspected the Guard of Honor and recalled his days as a young cadet as he participated in the culmination parade of National Cadet Corps Republic Day Camp in New Delhi. He lauded the strand of India's young population in fields ranging from startups to sports and said, No one can stop a nation whose youth works with the spirit of nation first. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday took part in the culmination parade of the Tri Services Organization National Cadet Corps or NCC's Republic Day Camp in New Delhi. Modi, who is a former NCC cadet, as a mark of respect, sported a signature bottle green colored turban of Sikh cadets as he inspected the Guard of Honor and daredevil acts and cultural performances by various contingents. In his address, he lauded the strength of India's young population in fields ranging from startups to sports and said no one can stop a nation whose youth works with the spirit of nation first. कोई कृषि क्षेत्र में नया कर रहा है कोई सप्लाई चेन को सुधारने के लिए नया कर रहा है कोई शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में बदलाव के लिए कुछ नया कर रहा है इनमें देश के लिए कुछ करने का जज्बा है कुछ कर गुजरने का जज्बा है साथियों जिस देश का युवा राष्ट्र प्रथम नेशन फर्स्ट की सोच के साथ आगे बढ़ने लगता है उसे कोई दुनिया की दुनिया की कोई ताकत रोक नहीं सकती है NCC comprising the army navy and air force brigades is engaged in grooming the youth of the country into disciplined and patriotic citizens Best cadets also receive medals and batons from the Prime Minister during the event which is held on 28 January every year. India's northern Jammu and Kashmir is in a deep freeze as the 40-day long harsh spell of winter called Chillai Kalan is underway. With temperatures dipping to below freezing levels, Srinagar residents turn to harissa, a famous traditional dish to brave the bone-chilling cold. With the 40-day long harshest period of winter called Chillai Kalan underway in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir, locals in Srinagar city have turned to harissa, a famous traditional dish to brave the bone-chilling cold gripping the entire territory. People are thronging eating joints to relish harissa, traditional spicy meat porridge with unique concoctions of the world-renowned Kashmiri saffron, aromatic spices, rice, meat and sauce. Generally eaten during breakfast and served with traditional baked bread as an accompaniment, harissa is served steaming hot, topped with ghee or clarified butter. Because I have been addicted for the past 7-8 years, I continue to be addicted to this thing. I have been addicted to this thing. And now you can see how many people like this. In the Kashmir, people like this thing. And this is a very traditional dish in Kashmir and it is very famous. There is a restaurant here that has been around 70 years ago. It has been around 70 years. और जो मेरा सभी मतलब पुरख है हमारे को यही काम करते हुए और मैंने भी इसी को फेवर दिया यही काम करने के लिए तो अगर हम देखें अगर आप जाना चाहेंगे हरीसा है कैसे को करते हैं इसमें बहुत ये हैक्टिक काम है इसके लिए एक तो मसला ये है कि ये फायर पे कुक होता है इसमें गैस वगैरह नहीं लगता है The popular Kashmiri dish is in great demand and is exported in abroad including America and Europe Harissa seller Malla said Harissa is high on calorific and protein content and digest easily through the day, besides warming up the body and the hearts of Kashmiris as well. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.